What's up, everybody? History for Fools. Welcome to History for Fools. We are talking today about the one of the original. You know how you people say, um, oh, man, he, he drank the Kool-Aid, and he's now he's changed his views, his popularity, right? Or or when um, Chingo Bling came out, they were saying he drank the Kool-Aid or, or whatever. Right. Well, the origins of he drank the Kool-Aid come from this gentleman, his name is um, Jim Warren Jones, who was born on May 13, 1931. Oh. And he's, um, he was born to a very poor home in Ohio. and But in his heart, he always wanted to be a Baptist minister, or he wanted to be a leader in his own way. And that's where he, his first, he's the guy that, and then later on in 1978 or 77 of August, he would um, have a bunch of his followers drink cyanide in um, Kool-Aid. And 935 people willingly and unwillingly drank this poisonous cyanide. And then he committed suicide and shot himself in the head, allegedly. allegedly. But, but um, before we get to all that, so when people say, oh, you drink the Kool-Aid? It's because Jim Jones, he poisoned all his followers with Kool-Aid. And that's where the origins are. Oh, he drank the Kool-Aid, which is pretty much calling you a, a follower. If you drank the Kool-Aid or, or somebody who is easily, easily bamboozled. Or easy, <coughs> if you're easily, like, like you're easily uh, um, swayed. swayed, connived, easily swayed, easily to manipulate this with a reference goes for you all. He drank the Kool-Aid. And there he is, Jim Jones. He also made um, creepy black glasses on white people creepy. Creepier. Creepier. Yeah. Like like when you see his glasses, you only think of Johnny Cash. Right. And you think of this guy. No, I think now like our, uh, Pablo Escobar used to wear glasses. Like or Roy that. Orbison. Yeah, before that. But yeah, I, I kind of dig the look though. Like he definitely adopted... A villainous look which is crazy to me because like whenever i see these guys that get to like lead a lot of people i'm like doesn't that guy not look like something this guy had the best believe in he one of the he had the best pickup line too as a as a as a pastor turn cultist he had the best line like i see like if you were to tell him i see mr jones pastor jones i see you as a brother then i will be your brother yeah yeah, he was. He goes, I, 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 I see you as a father, then I'll be your father. I see you as a god, I am your god. Yeah, he definitely I see you as that. a lover, I am your lover. Oh no! So this guy also he was like Dave Koresh took a, a page out of David Koresh. He took a page out of Jim Jones' Bible and said, "I'm also going to sleep with my followers." Right? Yeah, he sure did. He sure did. <laughs> so this guy was just say like if Butch was following Jim Jones, he'll also have sex with Butch Escobar. Right. And then he'll embarrass him in front of the congregation and goes, Well, I slept with Butch and he saved. Right. Yeah. He yeah. Jim was not um he was not discerning when it came to male or females, uh, as far as who he fucked. So, so what did you what um there's also a, 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 when I hit a butch about Jim Jones he said, "Hell yeah!" Oh my god! I was god, all into I this. Excited. I saw the book with um, with Book Pile. What's his name? Uh, Booth Powers. Book Powers. Powers Booth. I mean, Powers Booth. When I was a kid, Powers Booth, which um, he ignored me at the airport, bro. So did he really? But you know, I, uh, I'm I not mean, gonna get all mad right, right, and hold right, it right. against him. But I, I am annoying. I would have lost my mind and probably would have. He probably would have ignored me. Um, when I was a kid, every once in a while, I'd like if I was grounded or in trouble. I would like pretend to be hanging out with my mom just so I could watch whatever she was watching. Cause sometimes she'd watch some interesting shit outside of her soap operas. And one day she had the Jonestown thing. So you like Columbo and all that shit, huh? Yeah, Heat of the Night. Like I would oh. like whatever it took, bro. Just look, to get... look at everybody look at me when he said Heat of the Night. <laughs> <laughs> heat of the Night where only black people are guilty. Hey, bro. <laughs> I think it was like hey, that show was all right. It was a wasn't black that guy. opposite though? Like the guy, like it was like racism. It was weird because it was like the guy from 
Archie Bunker was always for the black people, it seemed like, in the show. And he was like, they're that's blaming what, a black guy. That's why this show is called guy. History for Fools. We don't know what the name of the show Actors are. Oh yeah, we don't. His name don't is know. Archie Bunker. That's it. The guy from Archie Bunker. He's always gonna bro. be Archie Bunker. Dude, what's funny is my girl will go. Do you, at this? Are you gonna watch this movie with this actor, this actor, and that actor? And I'm like, I don't know who the fuck those people are, but I'll watch whatever movie you want. And then she'll go, this guy's, the, you know, the guy from yeah. this, from that movie, and then he did this. Yeah, movie. man. Oh yeah, that guy. And I'm like, that's why I, when I talk about it. In a bit, I say that um, I just stay quiet and, and go, yeah, man, that's the movie with um, Home Alone's mom. Right. That's the same thing, bro. Come on. Yeah, it's how I describe shit. Uh, but yeah, I watched the Powers Booth one, dude. And I remember thinking like, that was crazy. Because the scene that I remember most is when he's making him drink the Kool-Aid. And then as people are trying to run away, they're getting shot in the movie. Um, which actually, there's not a lot of evidence of that. Um, but all that, and then watching him kill the them kill the congressman was like mind blowing as a kid, because it's like an assassination. Um, what's kind of crazy too, on top of that, is my girlfriend was neighbors with um, the lady, the the lady that went over there, uh, Jackie Spear, like the assistant to the congressman. And she was also a lady who got shot. But yeah, all these people in this movie got like, you know, were getting blasted and drinking poison. There it is. Stop drinking. <laughs> I saw one where it's this guy standing over all the bodies and he's like, oh yeah. Like it's so it's crazy how we turn mass like killings into a joke. Like my uh uh some of my oh, You saw that one, that picture I sent you? What? That meme? Yes, dude. It was a bunch of um <laughs> People dead on the ground, and then he's like this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's the one. You said that to me. Yes. Okay. I showed that. Uh, I showed that to my girlfriend. She got upset. Um, but what's funny is that her kid sent me 9/11 memes all the time. <laughs> and I just like. Oh man! Don't shout out to 9/11, man. For beating this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that was that right. Shout out to 9/11. Yeah. Oh, what's the name? It has the. That's the fucking oh, Jesus. Christ. Oh yeah. <laughs> So yeah, there it is, man. There it is. There it is, dude. That's how. It, that's the what history it is. of um. Don't, don't drink the Kool Aid. That's from drink the Kool Aid. Yeah, uh, if you are supporting a particular, and I don't mean the one way or the other, because I get told this all the time. Um, but if you're supporting any candidate right now, one side is going to tell you the other. You know, um, don't drink the Kool Aid. Also, man, man uh, people are, were very offended that uh, when Donald Trump during the debate said that. Um, Haitians are eating dogs, especially oh. Filipinos, because they eat dogs. You know, they said they're taking all the credit from them. <laughs> and then, um, and then Vietnamese were upset too. Hey, wait a minute, man, we eat dogs too. There is, there's a dog. And then Mexicans are upset because we ate dogs back in the day so much that we made a dog extinct. Did we really? Yeah, bro. The original We're... Chihuahua. Okay. The original Chihuahua was a mixture of another dog. That was bred with a lot of fat and meat that the Spaniards, when they came over here, they were eating them, bro. And so were the so were the Mayans. They ate so much of this dog that it became extinct. Here, show it real quick. Mexicans eating dogs, bro. Yes, bro, back in the day. But, All you motherfuckers hey, talking hey, chinos but back in whatever. The, hey, in our defense, we were not considered Mexican back then. Oh, okay. <laughs> there it is. That little fool. Dang, that little dude. guy was a dog that was bred to be to be eaten in Mexico back in the day, and it was mixed with another dog, the the dog that's uh you normally see that the some the other dog and they be that would form the Chihuahua. What the fuck, bro? That's crazy. There you have it, man. Everybody eats dogs at one time. I'm honestly like, bro, when they showed the one the, the like everyone saw one says the meets a little the picture rough. of the guy carrying the goose back home. You know, which they say is a false picture that it was just some guy that was cleaning up dead geese. I'm like, bro, I, I fuck, I'm sure I have cousins that have fucking kidnapped chickens from a farm or taken geese home from the park. Dude. Like, People went crazy over the eating dog thing, man, that um, there's bomb threats in Springfield, Ohio. Yeah. You know? Yeah, the people are losing their mind over it, and I just thought it was funny. I just it think was it's funny, funny, man. It's a rough time. I don't think I don't know like you know whatever you want to say dude it's like uh all right I don't have pets that anybody's stealing so it's not my concern
I don't know how to. I don't. Know. I don't know. But imagine, bro, just say that it, that it was true, okay? I mean, the big concern is like, man, we should have more food shelters out there, and Springfield are eating the dogs. You know, it's funny that that um that once Kamala came in, he became Biden. Right. Yeah. Which we knew was gonna happen. I, I really think that what was it like three episodes ago? And yeah. and I mentioned it, you know, my um They were doomed, huh, with Biden. They were doomed. But when you mentioned that that they had this plan all along that they were gonna wait till the convention was over. I told you. First of I, all, bro, I Who called it we history of fools taught it first. Bro, I really believe you did because I've presented that to a few people that are very um knowledgeable in the political er area and they're like holy fuck i never thought of that like especially my girlfriend who's not at all she hates when i fucking share conspiracy theories or anything like she just sat up we were laying down and she sat up and i was like i'm all dude felipe told me this and she sat up and she was like mother it's like i was like that were you here for that when when he when he uh when he brought that up were you here yet he said that the that and just so everybody who wasn't listening, Felipe, when we sat down, this was like the day after Kamala had said she was running. Felipe was like, I think it was a con I think that they were planning to do it the whole time. They were just going to wait till the convention was over and then they were going to hit him with it because, like, think about it. They have nothing. They finished their convention up and and all they did was shit on Biden. Yeah. They didn't even talk about Kamala. It was too old to lead. Yes. And too bro, and, to and, and it was ahead. like a landslide since then. It was like holy shit, dude. Like I really think that was like incredible, incredible insight, man. That like and you said it here first. History for fools. We don't always get it 100% right, but I think that day we're getting it right. Also, man, some of the stuff you have, you need to look up, bro, and you, you if it, if we're wrong, prove yourself right. Right, yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. You're not proving us wrong, totally, because the show's totally, already taped. Bro. Like we, I don't even care, bro. It's a, it's a history podcast based on what information we can gather in between doing gigs as comedians. You know, when I was watching um or listening to the Jim Jones, David Koresh, you know, and um people who are become cultists, you know, right, and um. How come he, he? How come? How come he, he can't just take white people with him, bro? Leave us out of it. <laughs> you you know, like just take the take poor rednecks, take white people that sleep with his, each other's sister. Right. Leave minorities out of your coat. Right. Nah. Don't invite us to your death camp, bro. And that was the thing is he targeted black people during the civil rights. But because he was uh, he was what you call an a, a abolitionist back then. Like he was totally, first of all, he was against discrimination right. and racism. Well, he was strong sympathizer. His dad was in the KKK. And no, so no I, way. Yeah, and I think that's what, that's what triggered him the other way. Um, the wonder, man, I heard that when he used, he used to have sex with the sheets because they had two holes on them. <laughs> I don't think so. Huh? Uh, a veteran of the Great War and victim of uh, mustard gas who um, eventually... Follow her son. Follow her son to Guyana. Uh, Jane's parents were. Jones' parents were. Um. So I gathered this information. I'll give Whoa. you the name of the podcast. What's the Great War? World War Two or World War One? World War One is considered the Great War. It's funny, the Great War. I didn't know that. Isn't that crazy how they World War Two is the the not so Great War. Yeah. Yeah. No, in Vietnam. Uh, hey, we have no number for that one. So in the, we lost. It, um, in the book that I read, it had said that his dad, his dad, um, was a member of the KKK, and it had influenced him in the opposite direction. Um, I can, you know, anyway. who was a member of the KKK? Who? Donald Trump Senior. Yes, that's true. Donald Trump Senior, when um, the, the, the there was a he got arrested leading um he was not leading a march like people say oh he was leading a march no no he was not leading a march. He was one of the marchers. He was one of the marchers. He was not leading a march. Yeah, no. People always wanna wanna make it look like he was a leader of the KKK or he was like a wizard. Nah. Right. Just man, when when there when, when let me tell you about get about about um gatherings and getting people to do something in March. Say we're a bunch of white people. Just say we're brown. 
I want to be white. And we're and then we're gonna go to a Brown Lives Matter rally, and we need two thousand motherfuckers. Right. So where we we got nineteen hundred, and we see ten people doing nothing. Hey, bro, what are you doing today? Nothing. Hey, you want to go rally with us? Give yes. you fifty bucks. Yeah. I'll, that's give you 50, how they do it. I'll give you fifty dollars. Just what do I gotta do? Just keep the fucking sheet on. And stand in the back. Right. And don't start shit. And they won't be shirts. And no one's going to know who you are once it's over. Because no, it's you over. You know, on. you take your sheet off, give it back to us. My, my, my son is cold. Maybe you should do the fucking history of the KKK. So I'm pretty sure, you know, so they, they went over there, bro. I'm pretty sure you could grab anybody, bro, with a with a torta and a sandwich, bro. A right. torta and a... What are you guys doing over there? Hey, you want a burrito, bro? <laughs> I'm getting ready to go to my, my classes at Phoenix. <laughs> Here's your story, bro. <laughs> You were standing there and a shooter came into the school. Right. All right? Yeah. That's your story. Right. So whatever, dude. But um, so the KKK went to protest in New York City, I think, because they were going to hire um, Catholic Irish people. That was like the beginning of um, when you start seeing a bunch of Irish police officers uh-huh. joining a police force. Yes. So there were some people within the force that were against it, right? So somehow somebody made it a political view, political thing. So the KKK came in to protest the hiring of Irish Catholics. Okay. So um, there, yeah, and, and there was a fight, bro. That's and, um, so fucking interesting. But his his dad was arrested, you know. But yeah, released, burned his sheets probably. And right. Made a made a bunch of business meetings over there, you know? Right. But being part of the KKK back then was like being part of a golf course. Well, yeah, it's like being, It was all businessmen. It was like, oh, the the um, Knights of Columbus and then the KKK and the Odd Fellows. And I, again, I mean, none of, none of this is, to me, is okay. I'm just saying, like, at that time, it was very, very normal for, Imagine like, the fear of white people back then, bro. Sh- fuck, bro. Imagine, Pretty, bro, right. you're just sitting there being white, bro, by the fire and shit. <laughs> you're just there chilling, bro. And all of a sudden, your maid, who is black, is reading, dog. Right. It's fucking reading a book out loud. Right. And that shit's gonna fuck with you, right? Yeah. Because you're like white power, bro. You're like, wait a minute, man. It's old Midley reading. Right. Is she reading? She actually, yes. So that means. And teach her sons to read. Right. They're all going to read. Right. We got to do something well, about every, this. Well, we all know knowledge. We got to do power. something about this. We got to stop this. You know what? We're going to let them play in baseball. Oh, okay. I see where you're going. We're going to distract them by letting one of them in to play baseball. Right. And then the whole conspiracy starts. I wonder, you know, and I, I, I do wonder, like, where they started to make concessions because. Uh, you're right. It was it it was very very like um, I think it's very threatening for them. And again, I think knowledge is power. I think that's why you know when They're I powerless when I read a lot of um, Steinbeck books because it's stuck in a certain period. Um, I was reading that the that like it was very discouraged amongst like rural people for their kids to go to college. Like if they went off to college, they would be like they, it was like you got made fun of if you had to go to college. And it's like, um, Nerd. and I think it was, I, I really think it was a discouragement from the top, uh, to, um, uh, to, <clears throat> to, to keep power because they knew that the more educated you were, the more you read books. It's why book burnings happening. It's why burnings, it's bro. why they're burning books now because, you know, cause they don't want power, to... bro. You want power over the people, man. You don't want to, you want to keep them down. Right. Just cause back in the day, bro, like. When no one knew how to read, no one knew where shit was. That's why you look at stuff. You you see something. You see like the barber shop, and it has a little a swirl right there, it's red, and white. And the reason it's like that is because to let idiots know that they cut hair there and they also do like minor surgeries. Right, that's what it's from. But yeah, so that's where the, the little swirl is. Yeah, and then the drugstore they didn't even say drugstore. There was actually like a. Like some kind of scientific thing outside that made it, you th- you like a normal a normal person would go oh that's the drugstore. It's why we have a lot of symbolism. In and then the blacksmith life. also, it was just an iron rod, and you knew 
fucking sure of. There was a badge outside. Beer, you know, there was whatever. And strip bars today is for people like me who need to be at, you got to tell me 10 times. <laughs> it's girls, 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 girls. <laughs> so, I mean, so keep in mind that um, Jim Jones and these coaches <laughs> people are not grabbing somebody that's reading books every day. Right. No. No. We're talking, and, and I don't know if you remember growing up as a kid, um, and um, literacy campaigns were all over. Riff. All over the team. Remember Riff? What was Riff? Reading is fun. Yes. Okay. That's because a large majority of poor people at the time, um, black people, Hispanic people, were... Um, marginalized. Were marginalized and had no fucking um reading skills and we also know had no libraries in the neighborhood so you're you know you're looking at you're looking at an era that just comes out of after world war ii um where we took japanese people off the fucking streets and put them in camps at the same time like my friend says and then we put them in liquor stores (laughs) that was after that's conspiracy theory and then after that um you know, you have the civil rights movement that comes along and black people are getting washed off the streets. Fucking shit's getting crazy. And then you have this white dude that comes in and says, I'm the answer to your problems. And at the time, the great white hope, bro, he did so well in his in his in his order skills that um, he that's why he got so far and why so many people died because he had so much support from people who believed in him. Jane Fonda, um, All these Walter Mondale, uh, the president's wife, Joan Carter, uh, or June, oh, Joan Carter, June Carter. He was like Hitler, fuck. bro. He was very charismatic. Bro, he was so charismatic. And I mean, Still even um, the right words. Um, uh, what's his name? The, the gay leader of San Francisco, Harvey Milk. Um, Loved him, put Richard him in charge Simmons. of housing in San Francisco once he came here. Um, in the milk. But you know, we're you know just to give you guys a background real quick. This is a guy from Indiana that uh, that was heavily influenced by reading books of by Karl Marx and by Karl Marx and and Hitler, and he became uh, very communist very early. And this is also again at the same time that the Red Scare was happening, anti-communist movement was happening. And he witnessed that as a communist, he didn't like the way that communist people were being treated. So he decided to do something about it. At the same time, he's also being very religious. And those two things are guiding him. So he finds, so to, so he starts speaking at churches and he, um, he gets he hired. Integrated his church was something that was not done in that area, huh? Well, at first he had one church. Um, it was never like it was like black and white. It was unheard of in his town, right? Right. And in 1951, he joined the Methodist Church and they gave him his own church. And then when he said he wanted to um, bring black people in, they said no. So he said, "Fuck that, I'm leaving." And he went to the People's Temple. Was that in Guyana or in America? That was still in America. He hadn't left for Guyana yet. He. Um, he joined the Human Rights Commission after that, and then he started up his own church um, where he, uh, uh, let's see, the first white couple, him and his wife, were the first white couple to adopt uh, a black child um, in Indiana. Um, he, That's the basis of that show, Driffers. He started Coast. the uh, Communist United, the Community United Church, which ended up being the t- uh, the People's Temple, which is what what it ended up being. Um, and he was pulling in black people, and black people loved him. And he was talking about integration. And he's doing things like going to like restaurants with black people, making them go in, order food, and then when they were treated like shit, he would come in with cameras and shit and press and be like this person's. Uh, Racist. Racist. And and so he was doing a lot of that. And and he was getting wow. a lot of kickback in Indianapolis for this. So he said, fuck this. So he was like going in and then he'll pay him, huh? Right. Yeah, he was going in and then he was tricking him. But what he would he he at some point he had a premonition. Um Premonition. Where uh yeah, 1961, he had a premonition that Chicago was going to get nuked. And this is, again, and this is what he was doing, too, with black people, bro. He, he, was, he started that. He was doing healing shit. Oh, well, the there was a big scare. We were definitely, in that time, in The that Cold era, War. The Cold War had started. We were in a very dangerous place as America. So he said that Chicago was going to get nuked? Right. Did other people believe that? 
Can you look that up? People were definitely believing that. I could say that without Chicago a doubt. Chicago was going to get nuked. Chirac was going to get nuked. When we were... That in, is so... Well, that is... When you think about it, it's like... That is so... Um, so selfish of the city of Chicago to be thinking that. When there's other big cities in the country. Well, we thought that okay, all big, man. We thought that all big cities. Okay, were forget be... about just bombing New York City and DC and California. Right. You know what? Let's put extra fuel, extra fuel, and bomb the smallest city in the Midwest. The smallest city, the, the third smallest <laughs> city. Well, I think back then, yeah, you're right. And that's yeah. the thing is like, like. But like, you know, they didn't need. It's not about you, Chicago. <laughs> Chicago, you didn't need to get nuked. Right. Because even after the scare ended, half of the city looked nuked. Well. <laughs> Keeping your head over water. Temporary layoff. Was that that neighborhood in Chicago? That's the that's the Cabrini Green. Cabrini. Here you go, bro. Cabrini Cabrini Green's Green's housing projects. Yeah, dude. Um, Elevated to death. Chicago had already gotten nuked, but nobody noticed it. So New York City too, bro. Pull pull up that article you just had there, if you can, for me. Um, So he he got really scared and wanted to look up the best places to go and hide, and that's kind of how he found Guyana. Um, but he he decided on something a little more practical after he went to a bunch of uh, South American countries. Uh, he decided. Speaking of that scare, okay. I bet you if you had a million followers, uh huh, and if you were to stay, and you know you look the same way, but they know you're like you're like um, Butch Jones. You're Chewy the Cuerpo Ventura. Okay, Chupi the Chewy the, the Cuerpo, cuerpo Ventura. What's Cuerpo? Body. <laughs> Ventura. Chewy the Cuerpo Ventura. What does Ventura mean in English? No, just like you're just, just in the body of Ventura, bro, but right, in Spanish. But, but then you got to flip it. If we're flipping Ventura, the first two, you got to flip Ventura. To Ventura back to means uh, the city of Ventura. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be Chewy the body Oxnard. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, um, yeah. So if I was that guy and I had a million followers... And you were to stay right now. Hey, man, you know what? Enough is enough. You know, um, no one's doing their job. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start, a, a, I'm gonna start training 100 of my followers to do some hardcore rec- reconnaissance. And we're going to go over there. And we're going to find this guy from Honduras. And we're going to destroy them and move them out of America. Right. And I bet you you get people to join. Sure. Hardcore motherfuckers. Absolutely. Hardcore. Especially right now. But right now it's... The, the amount of followers you think you have, they'll just think you're crazy. Dude, all my followers think. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how easy it is. Uh, can you look up a, a line from, from um um Oh Brother We're Out Thou? That George Clooney says when his, the his three his two homies are getting baptized, and he says something about how religion comes in perfectly when the chips are down. And it's a very sad, You're hardcore. You're right. I, I'm trying to remember that quote. I really remember a lot of quotes from that movie. That's one of my favorite movies. But I don't remember. I vaguely remember. Yeah, that but one. so so um, he's also he's doing like he's doing good things in the, like everyone else in the beginning, right? Well, he is doing great things, and then and, and he even does better things when he moves to California. This is still someone who's doing only good things in Indianapolis at the time, and not doing too much trickery. Uh, yeah, he's still like just. Like loving black people, showing love for black people, has a church. Um, he decides to move his church to Redwood Valley, California, where he could be safe from nuclear war. Redwood and Valley, that's where Sons of Anarchy is from. Redwood Valley is one of the considered uh, one of the safest places to be if there's a nuclear war in the United States because it's far enough away from San Francisco, which would definitely be hit. Also, it's covered in mountains. Also, it's protected by the Planet of the Apes. When is it really? <laughs> when, That's when, how they boned out so, too. In the, in the so movies. just just so people understand, when nuclear war, if nuclear war ever to happen, or when a nuclear war bomb mashes into land, the blast that does happen is flat and straight across the. Yeah, ground. I'm sure you'll be safe. Um, so it, any mountains, any high ranges, um, would be protected from that blast. Like if you were to go on top of like Big Bear, and Los Angeles got hit. 
you would probably be completely safe for at least a day or two till the radiation got to you and then you would die um but uh so this was the idea when i was a kid i remember my mom being like people who want to survive nuclear wars is fucking stupid because that's what we're gonna have we're gonna have nuclear winter after that and the whole world like wherever a nuclear war happens um if it happens if we have like a global nuclear war which if we send one bomb or someone sends a bomb to us, we start sending bombs. China starts sending bombs. Russia starts sending bombs. Our allies, Korea, Japan, whoever has bombs will start sending bombs. So it's not like a couple of places are going to get hit. The entire world will be uh, nu nuked. And even if just a few places get hit, which it won't be, uh, we will suffer uh, what is called a nuclear winter. But if I'm at Walmart when that happens, bro, I'm going to start eating cake in there with my hands, bro. You know, I'm gonna open another cage. Bro, going, oh, can I can I oh. talk about the North Korea thing? What North Korea thing? The one you showed me when we uh, when you showed me that that video of the emergency and you thought it was gonna happen. Oh yeah. <laughs> this this is my favorite things about Felipe. This is like why I knew I would be like fucking really good friends with you because you told me you showed first you showed me this this video prank that this guy did to his friends. Where they're all chilling, watching YouTube, and all oh, of a sudden yeah. it comes on that that North Korea is sending nuclear weapons Bunch to America, to yeah. America, and it's like, boom, and it looks official, and they start panicking. I really thought it was for real, and bro. so you said that they did that to you, and I said, because I'm so interested in this subject. By the way, I was like, what did you think would happen, or what did you like? What were your first thoughts as soon as you knew that was going to happen? And you're like. I wanted to ask if I could have a pound so I could smoke it. <laughs> it was funny, dog. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> fuck checking out on your family, the dog, whatever. It's already over. They played a practical joke on me at, at Louis. We're by my weed at, and um, they had they had a. We we're watching Netflix. All of a sudden, getting high. Then they played a video. Burp, burp, yeah. Burp. And it blocks everything, right? And and then like. And then outside, there was ambulance outside already, like making a lot of noise, like a lot of noise. So then um, they fucking, uh, they show America just been out. Uh, uh, look at the warheads on his way to New York, Chicago, Hawaii, California. Was it was in the 90s, the war in imminent. The President Trump has been alerted. Then they showed President Trump. People start panicking and shit. <laughs> and then these fools are trying to call their, everybody's trying to call somebody, but they're, somehow they're, the phone is blocked. You can't call nobody. And then I, I'm just sitting there going, fuck, I have no one to call. Right. So then everybody boning out, leaving. And then I go, hey, man, you got want anything, man? You want anything? And I look at the guy, he goes, they're throwing a prank. Yeah, man, can I have a pound of weed, bro? Fuck <laughs> you, you know? Ever since then, bro. And then he said, nah, man, just kidding. Never, dude, never again will I ever think of anything else. When shit's going to go down, I'm just going to pull over and start smoking weed. What can you do, man? What can you do? Uh, and then I put that practical joke on Gabby Lamb. I have the video of that. And um, she, she was calling her. She was worried about her pets. She went right to her pets. They were dead. They're, that's the thing to me. It was like, it made perfect. It made perfect sense to me because in my mind, I was like, everybody's already dead anyway. What the fuck am I going to do? No, you're not going to be able to call anybody because everybody's going to be calling people anyway. If that's the case, which I think the government will just shut our phones down. So to me, you might as well just sit back, jerk off, smoke some weed that's why, um, and play with your uh, action figures. That's what I'm um, when um Something in the office when they're looking for the emergency kit. He goes, we don't know. He goes, we don't know. We don't have the emergency kit. Only Dwight know where it is, and he don't. He didn't want to tell her where it is. And then he tells her. He goes, listen, man. If you need the med, by the time you need the medical kit, you'll be DF for two weeks. Right. You so, go ahead. So Rodrigo bro Torres, uh huh, from the What's Good Up Food podcast co-host, he said that he he wants to live like you know like there's a nuclear war. Right. And then after the dust settles, okay, and we're living in chaos. Not gonna happen, but okay. But he wants to live through that, right? It's yeah. He wants to be the guy, one of the people that are actually alive after a war, or nothing right. like that. And I would look at his body and look at him. And like, <laughs> Bro, you're barely surviving now. Please show a picture of Rodrigo right now. You're so barely surviving wonder. now, bro. You. Where are you gonna get your diabetes medication? <laughs> Hey, 
are you gonna, are you gonna farm your own your own Ozempic, bro? <laughs> I mean, where are you gonna stash all those Lamb of God T-shirts? <laughs> I mean, are they, who are you gonna put it? You gotta make decisions. Who should I put in the shelter, my son, or these Lamb of God T-shirts? <laughs> I've never seen someone with a larger. <laughs> That's a that's a way good, like, like really good in shape, Rodrigo. I'm gonna give you a picture of him that. That when you were putting, that would, right that's when you were putting tubes on his oh head. Oh my God, bro! The largest uh, Lama God T-shirt collection in the world. But seriously, look, how are you gonna survive that? You're barely <laughs> surviving now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who's gonna? <laughs> so he says that he wants to live for like a four. We're like, gonna get your doctor. He wants to live inserts. for a hundred and shit. No, here's what's gonna happen. Again, nuclear winter. Radiation sticks around in most places. A hundred for at least fifty years. Thousands, like we're talking hundreds of years at least to thousands, depending on how concentrated the. Um, I think because um, we're not talking about atomic bomb like we dropped on Japan. We're talking about so the rain will be bad for years. The rain will be bad. The, their life will cease to exist. Trays will die. Almost every type of insect will die except for a few. Roaches. Um, roaches will live. There will be somewhat vegetation in certain places, but it will be contaminated. Uh, you'll need to have a shelter that will last more than your lifetime in order to just live out your life. So you need to have like enough food to last you a 60, 70 of your, of your Rodrigo 15, 20 more years, but the average, per I'm just fucking with you, bro. I hope you never die. Um, but his um, chai lattes. Yeah, dude, you can't. And again, those aren't comforts you're going to have. I mean, there's rich people who are buying silos right now and these like fallout shelters. Like it's done. It, power off. As soon as some people die. Power off. And then your generator is going to last so long because you only have, um, uh, so much gas. And if you're thinking, well, solar is going to be great. No, because the earth will be covered in nuclear clouds that will block the How sun about the out people that for froze years, themselves? hundreds of years. What's that? The people that froze themselves. That's the other, oh, like cryo people? Dead, because nobody's going to work the machine. Oh, yeah, and that's the other thing is people who are freezing themselves. I mean, already you're a moron if you're fucking doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, good luck after nuclear war, bro. No one's going to keep that generator running. So, I mean, I don't know. When I'm, I, was, I remember being a kid... And for years after, I was a survivalist myself. Like before, I became a comedian. I was a I was what's considered a doomsday prepper before it was called a doomsday prepper. I used to hide garbage cans filled with guns and food in different parts of uh, the wilderness. And my mom, when I was a kid, and this rings true, and this is how I live my the life. The Juana bomber here. My my mom would say, I would go, "Are we gonna?" Because I remember being alive during the Cold War, my, and asking my mom like. Are we going to go to a shelter? What's going to happen if, like, we get hit? And she was like... Hey, they used to sell shelters. Like, we, should, we should do a history of promoting shelters. Yeah, I started the Cold War, like, era propaganda and stuff did like that. Did you get that. Have, uh, um, drills at your school? Yes, we had... We, we did, too. We had both earthquake and nuclear and they, fallout they, drills. They, they, they do this? Yes. Bro, you want to know what's scary? is like uh, Berkeley still has a monthly test for their siren. So you have the sirens? Yes. They're in LA, but they're inoperable. Right. There's one on Silver Lake on Parkman and Sunset. Yes. If you look up, I've you can still see it. I've seen those um, on the coast. They have a bunch of them, too. So Jim Jones used all these spheres that right. American had. Because imagine, bro, you're, you're um, African-American. You're, you're a drug addict. You're trying, to rec you're trying to get help for recovery. Right. And that's your weakest point, too, as a drug addict, because I've been there, bro. I remember when I was, when I was like... Drug free, and I was living at this rehab, bro. And we we're all Christian, and we we're all like following Jesus, bro. All of us together. If Brother Juan, the pastor, would have said that guy disrespected me and disrespected the name our Lord in vain, right? I want you guys to go handle it. We probably would have went over there and fucked him up. <laughs> Mexican. So that's why Jim Jones probably but, uh, but, the black uh, people but, uh, but, uh, he got I, jumped the first time. Because I remember, bro, that's how core, how core I was, you know? Right. And I remember um, being so hardcore that when, one time a girl passed by and my friend was all horny for her. He goes, man, I like to fucking put my tongue between her ass. Oh, my God. And I, and yeah, it started licking and shit. Right? And then, like, 
<laughs> now being, and I remember I just came, I was in rehab a Christian. And I put I like I I closed my Bible. I looked at him. And goes now where are you gonna go? All the for where are you gonna go from now, brother? <laughs> I mean, you have the thought in your head already. Right. How are you going to move on for the rest of your day? Right. What do you, what do you mean? Yeah, but you just disrespected a, 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 a sister. Right. By saying you're going to put your tongue in her rather than lick it. But how are you going to go over the rest of your day right. now? Like, what are your, how are you going to fulfill your brain? Your, your, how are you going to fulfill yourself <laughs> with a better thought than the one you just had? I mean, is this the end of your day? Right, yeah, this is your fight. Like, this is where you. But that was me as, as a hardcore the Christian. The base of your thoughts, yeah. Yeah, I was telling you how. Now you're, you're, you're entertaining these evil thoughts, bro. Right. You know, later on, you know, one day you might want to act upon this. You should really think about your, what you're saying out loud instead of keep it to yourself. Ow. And that, that, that was me. Right. But, but I'm just telling you, that's how I was when I was, like, involved with the church. Sure. But if they were to tell me, Go knock this fool out for saying that? Oh, bro. You weren't going to do that. I would have. Oh, you would have? Yeah. No Did shit. I remember watching SNL. That's how hardcore they flipped you at the Yeah, point. I remember watching SNL wow. with a couple of brothers. Right. And Phil Hartman came in, and he was dressed like Jesus. Okay. And then one of the pastors said, oh, hell no. Right. Like, he was offended, bro. Like, right. oh, hell no, brother. Yeah. Hell no. Right. Because you're not supposed to put Jesus in anything, bro. Right. In a comedy show or a sketch. Yeah, it's disrespectful. He needs to be, reason. if he could be telling jokes, he better do them from a cross. I didn't know this about you. So you were a hardcore Christian yeah, that for was, a minute. Yeah, that was back then. Okay. So then you can relate to this a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Okay. Because what he starts to do is he starts to go up and down California. Once he gets popular in, in, in the Green Valley, he goes he starts getting popular. He goes to San Francisco first, then he goes to Los Angeles. He opens up soup kitchens, he opens up um he opens up uh um, institutions for kids with disabilities, battered women's shelters, uh, pantries. I mean, he's he's doing this community effort where people in the community are falling in love with him, and he's gaining more and more power. But at the same time, he's Bitches. using he's using tactics like he's doing fake sick sicknesses, like where you know, let's say you come in with a cane, and and then I, I go over and, I, and I blast and I blast you with my hand, and I bless you, and you go. I'm cured. Yeah, I cure you of your plantar fasciitis. And you fall down, and then you get up, and you're like, he even does one where he takes an empty gun uh, of with blanks, and he puts it to his chest, and he makes it look like he, he dies, and then he, he limps away, and he heals himself, and then he takes his shirt off and says, I'm healed. Okay, Lazarus and, and they here. they lose their minds. But what starts to happen is, is that he's using beating tactics. Um, he's using, he's pissing on them. He's, um, he's, he's having them fight each other, like in fighting pits. And this is starting to get out. And, and eight people escaped the church um, up to Montana. And, and, and they, they go that far because they're afraid that he's going to send a search party, which he Bug. does. And they start to talk about what's going to happen. And there's, there's so. This is before Guyana, huh? This is way before my Guyana. So in 1972, a public expose comes out by a guy named um, uh, Lester Kensolving, scrutinizing the church. And in, re and in response to that, you know, and most of the brunt goes on, on, on Jones. But in response to that, everybody loses their mind. The public, there's public outcry. Um, politicians crack down. They go to the editors. So the the magazine pulls the expose, and it kind of goes away. But at that point, Jim Jones is like, "Fuck this. We need an alternative in case we need to get out of here." Yeah. And so when he goes and buys Guyana um, in 1974, the people that were following him, they were like the the hardcore believers, the real hardcore. They were given these two houses, everything, huh? Bank loans. Oh yeah, he was, and that's the other thing that was in that. Thank you for reminding me. He was also. Um, Getting, not just people's houses and bank accounts. If you had fucking welfare, he was taking your welfare from you. And then he was also getting you to adopt to, to the, give... The rehab I was at was too. What's that? The rehab I was at worked that way. It did it really? But they were, they were like this. Like, just say, um, you, you, 
you're, you have a drug problem, right? Right. But you have no money to pay for the rehab. Right. So they'll set up, uh, they'll, they'll sign you up with the county to get general relief, but right. they get the check and they get the food stamps. And, they are, and then together, with all of us, is how we put our pool together to put our food. But it's nowhere near enough what you would have gotten your own. I don't know what it is, but I never got it. I never saw it. Also, my, my, I, had a, I'm, I had a job, right. so my disability check will go to them. So this is something else we could probably do a history thing on, and I'm, I might. But it was I'm, all le legal, bro. We were right. actually were getting help. We right. were actually were getting fed. Well, this is the thing. But these people are getting rich, huh? Right. So this is what I'm about to say is in regards to that. And I got to look this up to make sure I'm correct, so don't quote me on this. But also. But L.A. has the most uh, rehab places in the in the world. And a lot of those are scams. And I know this personally from someone who was part of one. Also, um, what uh, Butch is saying also, that also back then, and this was like when, speaking like when his mom was around like hardcore marching with Cesar Chavez in the late 70s, yep. early 60s. That's um, back in the day, like we're talking about maybe a little bit after Reagan or before, but some of these funds were left over from Jimmy Carter and Ford, there was a lot of money given to cities for rehabs. Right. And like if like if, if he were to join the class, blah, 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 he would have somehow got funding from the city to open up a rehab. Right, yeah. And also the, there's a street, also there's a street gang that's also a prison gang that infiltrated one of the rehabs and started their own rehab. And they were... Oh, are you talking about yeah. uh, outreach, whatever? Yeah, bro? remember yes. that one? Yes. It was dude. started by the by the by the first Italian member that they allowed in Get out of here. So it wasn't Mexican people, it was an Italian? Yeah, but the, he was the part of the he was part of the gang. He was a member of the Mexic of the of the of the prison gang in, in California. No way. And then his name was We gotta do a history on this one, bro. His name is um his name is um Ah, uh, De La Rosa. Look really? up, um, look up, um, prison. Um, look at, look at, um, prison gangster De La Rosa, rehab, nineteen seventy-eight. No, a different one. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was out of Boyle Heights, bro. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. So. Jim Jones, pretty sure, used um city funds, state funds. Yes. For all this well, money. Well, he was okay. So he. Was they were. Uh, there were people. Who, there was a lot, like after Reagan, after when Bush and then Reagan, they put an end. When people say, "Oh, we're gonna cut taxes," they they cut taxes, but you can't cut taxes without cutting um, social programs. You know where he was making a ton of his money too, as well was he was getting people to hand over their kids to him. The more kids he was fostering and helping, the more more, mo more money the government was giving him. This guy's a genius. So there's one couple. There's this one couple. Uh, That's like that company. Grace and Tim Stone, who uh, give him their baby before he takes off to Guyana. Fuck. And 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 uh, Grace leaves the church first, and she's one of the first people to go to the newspapers and say, "Hey, there's fucking ro something rotten in Denmark about this." And so um, we got a little bit of time, so let's talk about. Um, so the the church was in Redwood Valley, seventy two. The public expose comes out. That's when he buys the property in 70, 74, 73, and seventy two. He goes out and buys the property. Seventy three. The gang of eight escapes and goes to Montana. Seventy four. I'm sorry. That's when in seventy four when he buys um, the property in Guyana. Um, in seventy seven. Now it's starting to come to a head, and we're getting closer here to what happens. In 77, he gets approached by another magazine. Actually, he doesn't get, a, he gets approached by the editor who wants to verify what's happening. And she talks about the pit fights, um, taking of the money. Um, she talks about Gray Stone talking about uh, him adopting her kid and not being able to see her kid because at the time, Tim Stone is a big member of his congregation. And while they're on the phone with the editor, Jones hands a, l a letter over to his assistants and says, we're leaving tonight. Like, he knew the jig was up. And so they take off to Guyana. And within maybe a year, less than a year, Guyana has close to a 1,000 people um, living in Jonestown. And that's when, when uh, it all starts to go down. Because they move there too quick. 
They moved too quickly. They made the move unexpectedly. So there's not a lot of food. There's not a lot of infrastructure. There's not a lot of money, as much money as he has. And it's like there's a storm too, huh? Well, um, I don't know about that, but the other thing is too is that Guyana. It's a Dutch colony, right? It's it's a British colony that's being let go, and 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 it's been no Dutch. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. But either way, it's about to be released, and Venezuela is on the border, ready to take this land. Shut up. And so I didn't know that. In order to prevent Venezuela from doing that, that's why they approved the land to Jonestown, because they were like, if we put America near the border of Guyana and Venezuela, then they're not going to fucking attack us from that angle. And Genius. so, um, so that's why they gave. That's where the senator went over that's there. That's why huh? they gave him as much. No, the senator starts to go over there because there's a group of people called the Concerned Citizens of Jonestown. They were getting letters, huh? and they were getting letters. So he finally, like, and it, dude, bro, this takes a lot because everybody loves this guy, and so this guy, so the this congressman, uh, Leo, um, man, uh, Leo Ryan. Finally, says, you know what? I'm going to go check all this stuff out. He takes, um, he takes the couple that's missing their baby that Jones took off with. Now the husband leaves the, the thing, right? The, yeah. uh, Grace and Tim Stone. This motherfucker takes off with their baby. He's a wanted man now. Like, dude, because he, he's, he's... Jim Jones is? Yeah, because they sue him for the baby, and then they win the suit. But Jones is like, I'm already in Guyana. Fuck you. I'm keeping your baby. So now he's a wanted man. And he's starting to feel the pressure. At the same time that these thousands of people are there, he starts doing what's called white knight scenarios where he brings certain people into the room with him at times. And then sometimes he does the whole group where he makes them drink Kool-Aid or Flavor-Aid actually yeah. is what it was. Um, he makes them drink it. And then he's like, all right, you drank it. You're going to die in like 45 minutes, you yeah. know? And then when you don't die, he goes, hey, listen, that was a test. You passed. You're in the, you're in the, in the trusted circle. Then he starts to do it on a large scale with, all the people and then he tells them look this is just a scenario that we're running in case we get attacked and then another thing he, he has a he has what's called um but this is all preparing to the end this was all prepared this was before oh i didn't even know you were preparing at that he was oh my preparing god them bro and like and 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 he's rusing them too because he's telling them that there's other ways that they can get away but this is just in case they get encroached upon um he's got what's called the red um the red brigade which is his police department for the town, but it's really his fucking death squad. And what he has them do is go out into the jungle and start shooting into the camp. And he's, all right, everybody get together. Let's start drinking the Kool-Aid. Let's start. They're attacking us now. Drink the Kool-Aid. Drink it fast. Drink it fast. And then, and then, so now these, bro, these people are fucking burnt to their wits end. He's, He's taking dissenters or people that are misbehaving. He's locking them in boxes out in the fucking sun in these... In these boxes so people are writing letters but as they're writing letters they're not getting home um he's reading them he's reading them and he's cutting them out but there are people that are getting concerned there is some stuff getting back so that's when you have now this guy gets together all these groups of people and he comes to guyana in a little six-seater cessna and and that's when they had a fake video of them all happy huh right so this is no so now we're we're getting to joy division we're getting to november uh, November 18th, 1978. Um, on November 17th, Leo Ryan calls up Jones and says, hey, we want to come see you at your place and take a look. J Hold on, let me get another batch of Kool-Aid for you. <laughs> Jones says, fuck off. I don't want you here. Ryan says, I'm giving you one day to prepare and then I'm coming no matter what. Jones changes his mind, says, come on through. Leo Ryan rolls up. And, and these people are singing, they're helping each other. There's all kinds of beautiful shit going on. They're sustaining themselves. Piñatas and shit. So then Leo Ryan gets up and he says, you know, I, 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 I was mistaken. You guys seem like you're living good lives here. I fucked up. Like, I, I'm going to still look into this, but I'm, I'm meeting people who said this is the greatest thing that's ever happened. To In the me. movie, somebody slipped them a note. So that happens right after he gets off stage. Yeah. Someone slips him a note. Someone slips the, someone slips the journalist a note. People start slipping notes, start going up to him saying, hey, I got to get the fuck out of here. It's not as cool as we made you think it was. We have no toothpaste. There's a little kid that actually calls out the journalist, and that's how this kind of all breaks out. So this little kid goes, hey, they're passing notes. 
So fucking so fucking Jones goes, little kid, dude. So they there's a video where ass. Jones goes. They uh, they approach Jones with a note, and he goes like this. Let me see that. And he grabs the note, hell quick, bro. And he's like, go get the guy with his kid. And he hands it to the other guy. And he's like, whenever anybody wants to leave, they can leave. Okay, I want to let you guys get out. Get the fuck out of here. And then so they take off to the fucking airport. Right, but there's there are not enough people to fit in a plane, or how many no, people? No, there's not enough. There's so many people now that they need to bring in another plane. Jones says, one he sends. So all all the people who want to go, there's one guy in particular, and this is the only guy who went to prison for this shit. Um, his name was um, uh, Larry Layton. Larry Layton. Larry he sends Layton. Larry Layton to go sit with the congressman in his plane. And he says, once you get in the air, fucking take this pistol out, fucking the pilots, let that fucker just crash. And so that's what Jones is thinking is happening. And so when they all take off, he goes to his people, he goes, everybody start getting ready for the Kool-Aid now. Um, and, and, the, and, and so he, he goes, because what's going to happen is, and I can't prevent this, the Red Brigade is upset, it's not me, they're going to go kill everybody at the airport. He sends a tractor full of guys with shotguns to the airport at the same time. He's all, and there's another man that's going to shoot the pilots on the plane with a congressman. It's too late. There's nothing I could do, you guys. They're going to come for us at any moment. We need to start taking the Kool-Aid now. Meanwhile, back at the airport, one plane takes off or gets ready to take off, but it's with, it's with Larry Layton, but not the congressman. So Larry starts to panic, and he just starts shooting people before the plane can take off. At the same time, the death squad pulls up in a tractor. This is, and this is where it gets suspicious to me because the death squad is accurate, man. This is no school shooters. These guys roll up with shotguns and, and massacre five people at once. And so they fucking, um, so they take off back. There's a bunch of people hidden. The congressman's dead. Um, and the, one of the planes takes off without anybody in it because they're like, the pilots are like, fuck this. Um, Larry Layton is actually still alive and in custody, I think, at this time or something. And then now back at the camp, he's like, all right, everybody, this is it. And there's actually one lady who's like, what about calling the Russians? Can't the Russians get us out of this? And he's like, no, we just killed a fucking... It's gonna be stop Stalin. <laughs> congressman. She goes, stop Stalin. <laughs> Drink the punch, pendeja. So... So he does that, okay? So he does drink the punch. They all drink the punch. Why do they have enough sugar, Paddy said? I'm going to give you guys some facts here, but one more thing is one of the one person... See, when they tasted, they knew it was poison? They knew taste? all... Well, they knew they were taking poison. Oh. They knew they were taking poison. And and, and there's a thing... I you, saw some, bro, that... um, I, I went In a movie, it was so fucked up. In a movie, you see, like, these mothers... Yes. Pouring out, giving it to their babies first. Yeah. Then that, then that little fool passes out, then they both pass out right. next to each other. They were taking syringes and squirting them into the mouths of babies. And um, also, there was, they said that, um, well, I, I don't know, one of the guys, he said, one of the guys who survived, uh -huh. he said that um, not everybody was t doing it willingly. Uh, you could see that some of them had, like, punctured wounds from hyperdermic noodles. Well, that's part of the conspiracy yeah, as well. Yeah, and they were walking by, yeah. and they were hitting them. Like that that was the guy was saying. Yeah, they, um, they're, during the autopsy, they found several people with puncture wounds from syringes that only could be assisted. Like, meaning they were in places and in that the I, woods, you couldn't get And it. in the forest, they found a bunch of syringes, too. Right. Um, so there was one survivor inside of the camp. Um let me give you her name real quick. Um, I would have pretended, bro. I would have been on the floor going, oh, man. Uh, did you drink it? Oh, you did? What's her name? <laughs> oh, I didn't drink mine. Um, I would have said that. I would have been like, I would have been like, oh, man, you know, you know, come on. You know, you, hey, you know me, bro. Hyacinth Thrash. I would have been like this, bro. You know me, man. Y'all picked me up from Vegas. You know me. <sighs> I don't drink nothing without ice cubes. <laughs> Bro, put, hey, 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 what, 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 are you stab, what are you stabbing me for? <laughs> no, Jim Jones knows <coughs> I only drink with ice cubes. Maybe, maybe we could go to the plane and get some ice cubes. <laughs> I ain't drinking that shit all hot. <laughs> Meanwhile, you get pricked. <laughs> ah! So there's one lady named Hyacinth Thrash. Check this story out. This is, this is one of my... If there's any favorite stories here, this lady slept through everybody getting woken up to go drink the Kool-Aid. 
was she the old lady. lady. She slept through the entire thing. Where was she at? In the camp? She was in the cabin in the camps. So imagine you wake up from a deep sleep and you walk outside and everybody's dead. That's how she survived. Like you wake up and there's that. Sound like Kate Quigley, bro. So <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I don't have to imagine it. So yeah. Uh, that was one survivor. There was a group of five teenagers that got lost in the jungle for three days. And, and one of them died from dehydration afterwards. And like, and so, I mean, <laughs> this guy's laughing. Uh, but like, he's, uh, they died, like one of them died from dehydration. A lot of the survivors were people who hid during the massacre at the airport or uh, people that took off into the jungle um, and we're chased by the death squad. There's a hundred people still missing from um, from the group from the group of dead, and they believe that that's the because uh, there was a hundred uh, members of the uh, of of the police department that he had. How about his, his um, red brigade? The red brigade, bri yeah. those guys survived, or some of them uh, willingly that, killed they, themselves. They think that the red brigade took off after everybody died. But they were they were hired by Jim Jones. They were hired by Jim Jones. Yes. They were Jim Jones' personal fucking security team. With a pause? Sure. I don't have to imagine it, bro. It happened to a bunch of comics. Hey, you pass out, you wake up, there's four openers dead. <laughs> You're going to cut that and slip that into the other? Yeah, that's, that's great. That's why no names. That's fucking hilarious, dude. <laughs> that's fucking And hey, we got the laugh, we got everything. Um, What's up, everybody? History for Fools Jam, man. Like, it's hard to Im imagine that uh, that can happen again, but it's not hard to imagine because it's probably can happening you, right now. Just a few David more facts. Koresh, the guys who killed himself with right. the sweats. Oh, um, uh, what were those? The Hellbop Comet people. Um, yeah. yeah, man. So, um, and there was also a guy back in the day, bro. I just want to give a couple, Go ahead, for it. couple more facts to just, just so people know. Um, this is this fucking tragedy and and how easily people can get tricked in this. 918 people died. 302 of them were minors, were people under the age of 18. Only 400 of them were identified. The rest were unidentified and are buried in um and I wish I dude, I wish I would have known this cuz I would have gotten to Oakland sooner and gotten a picture of the grave. Why were they not identified? They were they were Americans. They they didn't know how, bro, these are black Americans. In the 60s. So you're saying they only identify the white people? They, the white people didn't even stick around. The white people were all at the airport. So nobody, no, nobody white died at that coat? There's, I don't know if that's exactly the truth, but you hear in the death tapes, and you can look up the full death tape on, on YouTube, but he tells his people, you know who took off? You know who the fucking cowards are? The white people. And then you hear all these black people go, the white people. That's funny, man. In the movies, you, you see white people... With blue eyes dying right there. Right. Feeding their little, no, bro, little, little was, hipster baby. This was black people, bro. And this was mostly black people. The relief effort, the cleanup effort took four days. Just to give you guys an idea of what I'm it was. Oh. But a lying man. Fucking cribs. They kill more black people than Jim Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it took, dude, imagine having to clean this shit up. It's 85 degrees. A, on, on the day that they have to start cleaning up. Look at there it is. It's 80% humidity, okay? The body decays the minute you start to die. And it decays faster in that type of weather. And it's probably a different smell because of cyanide, huh? Oh, the so smell. rotting inside, huh? Probably. I can't even imagine the physiology of that, but... Um, the cleanup took four days. There's people who suffered from PTSD. There's That's why they also... Con the death tolls... Um, uh, argued about because you people die later, huh? People who committed suicide that survived. There's PTSD survivors like the cleanup crew. There's people who who committed suicide from that. Um, there, dude, this was a huge impact. This was the largest loss of life in America uh, before 9/11. Why white people, man? They're lucky. White people don't have like survivors guilt. They're like, fuck that, I live. <laughs> Meanwhile, Latinos have black. We gotta go to therapy and shit, shit. just because you made it and your little brother didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the problem, Felipe? Oh yeah, man, my brother's a crackhead living in Mexico, doing two podcasts, <laughs> making 
money. <laughs> History for fools, man. But yeah, man. It must be hard to survive something like that. Yeah, man. It, this, you know, it's like everything we always get into. And, of course, we always try to make it funny and entertaining for you guys. But it's still but, tragic. But reading this was... Dude, listening to the death tapes. Because my girl, when I first brought it up, because we we decided this um, just like a few days ago. <laughs> so I said, hey, this is perfect because I already know a lot about this. And I, and I talked to my girl who's really into it because she was neighbors with one of the people who was involved. Um and she she goes, oh, you got to listen to the death tapes. And we started to listen to the death tapes. And he didn't just take like, <clears throat> we're not we're nothing against the people, the the victims' families here, but he he also took normal people that were actually believing him, right? Who were professors, who were um, of course those, those people died at the airport, but um, but uh, he she took smart people too, right? Well, this money. is this is what I'm saying, man. Is like, and this is the this is the point. I think that. And I'm not trying to get political here. I really am not. But blindly believing it in someone so far that you're willing to fuck everything up for it is crazy to me. And and if you think it's just, oh, well, I'm not stupid. Yeah, I believe in this person, but I'm not stupid. You're fucking lying to yourself. This man tricks scholars. This man had uh, politicians in the palm of his hand. Like, everybody can be tricked. Well, that's that what tricked. he said. Um, Felipe could be tricked. Anybody could be it was, tricked. It was a depression. He goes, oh, yeah, depression. Religion always comes around the corner to grab the meek. Yes. Holy shit. Who said that? George Clooney and No Country for Old Men. Get the fuck out of here. That's because so in, the, in that scene, they, they had just ran away from prison, and, the, and, and um, the two other guys were getting baptized, right? Right. He goes, I'm cleared. I'm free. Jesus Christ just redeemed myself. Yeah, man, but uh, but according to the law, you know, you still have those two, those two bags, those two uh, piggy, <laughs> those two piggy the wrinkles. The Lord goes, has the, absolved but, me of all my discrepancies. That's what he said. Yes. The law has nothing over God. Okay, man, but we still have chains on us. Eh? Right, yeah, bro. We're trying to bring them back to reality. Yeah, you're still poor and broke, motherfucker. There it is, the line right there. Yeah. What's up, everybody? History for Fools. I'll be next week. I'll be um, look look for all my shows on FelipeWorld.com. Yeah, I'll see you guys too uh, on the next one. <laughs>